fractional equations. Again, objective to solve fractional equations. We're going to solve fractional equations again. I'm going to take my time a little bit more here. Once again, we're going to multiply by the LCD. Um, make sure you're careful of your restrictions here. When you solve um, these things, I forgot to talk about it before. Um, you always have to double check the restrictions. I, I don't know. Go back and check my problems from the last section. But here, obviously, what can x not be? It cannot be 0. Okay? Because if x was 0, this would be 3 over 0, and that's just nonsense. Um, so, let's work it. Alright, so I have an x of 4 and a 12. What do they all go into? They all go into 12x, don't they? So 12x is going to be my LCD. My restriction is x is not equal to 0. So, again, we multiply both sides by the LCD, 12x. And 12x times 3 over x, the x's cancel out. I get 12 times 3, which is 36. Minus 12x on the top. 12x over 4 is 3x times 1. And 12x times 1 12th is just x. Add 3x to both sides. Divide both sides by 4. Remember, x cannot be 0, and that's cool. It really can't be anything else but 9, actually. Now, here's a tricky one. What are my restrictions here? Well, let's see. This is really 2 over um, b times b minus 1 minus 2 over b minus 1. So, if b is 0 or 1, this would be 0. If b was 1, this would be so b cannot be 0 or 1. Okay? My restrictions. Now I'm going to add these, and I'm going to buy sorry equals 1. Now I'm going to multiply both sides by the LCD, which is just b times b minus 1. So I'm going to multiply the left side by b times b minus 1, and the right side by b times b minus 1, b times b minus 1. I'm going to multiply this, by b, this term by b times b minus 1, and it with a 2. I'm going to multiply this guy by b times b minus 1. The b minus 1's cancel out. The b sticks around with this guy. b times b minus so I get 2 minus 2b equals b squared minus 1. Subtract b squared. I'll bring this guy over. I'll subtract, add 2b to both sides. Subtract 2 from both sides. And I get 0 equals b squared plus 2b minus 3. And I'm almost done. I'm trying to solve for b. And I'm looking at it and saying, hmm, what two numbers multiply to get 3, but add to get positive 2? Yeah, I mean, sorry, multiply to get negative 3, but add to get positive 2. How about negative 1 and positive 3? So, b minus 1, b plus 3 is its factored form. That's equal to 0 when this equals 0, or this one does. When does b minus 1 equal 0? When b equals 1. When does b plus 3? When b equals negative 3. So there's my solution. And I'm going to double check. Uh-oh, we made a restriction here that b cannot be 1. Therefore, this doesn't count. B can only be negative 3. Whoa! Ho-ho! We haven't seen that before. <laughs> All right. It's tricky, wasn't it? Did you like it? Look at that. Let's check it out. Restrictions. X cannot be equal to 4. Why? If X was 4, well, then what would happen here? This would be a 0, and that's just nonsense. I'm going to solve this guy. Multiply both sides by the LCD. Now, you know what? No, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to cross multiply here. It looks easier. So I'm going to add 5x to both sides. Subtract 12 from both, both sides. Divide both sides by dos. That's not restricted. It's okay. It's going to be 9. Double side. 6 minus 9 is negative 3. 4 minus 9 is negative 5. Negative 3 over negative 5 is positive 3 fifths. It works. It works. It always, well, it doesn't always work. It doesn't always work. It doesn't always work. But it sometimes does, and it makes us so happy. All right. I'm going to solve this guy. We have 1 over, what is this? Z minus 3. Oh, it's a Z. So 2 minus 3. 1 over z minus 3 plus 3 over 9 minus 3z. Well, I'm going to rewrite this as 1 over z minus 3 plus 
3 over 3 times 3 minus z equals 0. z minus 3 and 3 minus b would be the same if I took a negative one, so I'm going to make this a negative. Oh, crack a jack, my phone's ringing. Can you guys hold on a second? Sorry about that, little interruption. All right, um, so remember that these are the same thing, that 3 minus z is the same thing as negative z minus 3. Why? How come these are the same? Watch. Negative z, oh man, people call me everywhere. Negative z, positive 3. Rearrange it, 3 minus z, the same. So when I see a 3 minus z, I can rewrite that 3 minus z as negative 1, z minus 3. So now I have a z minus 3 down there, right? That negative 1 times 3 makes this negative 3. So really, this is just negative 3 times z minus 3, so that's how I'm going to write that. So I should have just initially factored out a negative 3. If I factor a negative 3 out of there, end up with a z minus 3. So I look for my LCD. What's it going to be? Negative 3 times z minus 3. So that's my LCD. So I multiply both sides by negative 3, z minus 3. Multiply this side by negative 3, z minus 3. And what happens when I multiply this guy? z minus 3 cancels out. I get negative 3. Negative 3. These guys both can't. Plus 3 equals negative 3, z minus 3 times that is 0, which is true. Always, so this is called an identity. Because I get 0 equals 0. I have a true statement there at the end. All right. I could have just subtracted that cross multiplied. Um, what are my restrictions here, though? Before I do it, we have some restrictions here. Z cannot be 3. So it's true for all numbers except 3. Because I forgot about my restriction. I've got to be careful about the restriction. So it's all real numbers but 3. Uh, this guy's going to be a cross multiply one, I think. I'm going to do this one. Um, 4 times 4 minus a equals negative 1 times a squared minus 4a. Um, and I'm going to factor something else out of this. I'm going to factor an a out. So I'm going to get, I want it to be 4 minus a. I'm going to factor a negative a out. Whoa. 4 times 4 minus, oh, you know what? Let's just do it up and then solve for a because I'm going to end up having something factorable. So I'm going to get 4 times 4, I get 16 minus 4a equals negative a squared plus 4a. I'm going to add a squared over here, subtract 4a over here, and I'm going to have a squared plus minus 8a plus 16. a squared minus 8a plus, sorry, 16. And can I factor that? Yeah, two numbers that multiply to get 16. But I had to get negative 8. How about negative 4, negative 4? So I get a minus 4 times a minus 4. Equals 0. When does that equal 0? When a equals 4. But was that a restriction? I forgot to do my restrictions. Look up here. a can't be 4 because that would be 0. My restrictions are a cannot equal 4. <sighs> a can also not equal 0. Should have found my restrictions earlier. Ah! So a can't equal 4. If I solve that 4 is the only solution, this can't be a solution because it's been restricted and there is no solution to this problem. None at all. And uh, see, finally, let's do our restrictions first so we don't get into trouble. Get 2x here. Let's double check. 2x, x cannot be 0. 4x squared minus 1 is the same thing as 2x plus 1. 2x minus 1, and this is the same thing as 2 times x plus 1, right? So x cannot be 0. What else can x not be? Well, 2x plus 1 and 2x minus 1. x can also not be 1 half, and x can also not be negative 1 half.